Max, we've been talking about the multiverse for just about a decade now. Every two years, we're kind of seeing where we are, what your thinking is, uh, what other people, how the other people are criticizing what you're saying, what you're criticizing what they're saying. Where are we now? What, what are some of the latest developments, not just in observations, which is, which is an, an enormous uh, uh, contribution of, of recent times, but also your own thinking? I think it's been a pretty wild ride for the multiverse <laughs> in recent years here. Of course, multiverses, par parallel universes are not theories, they're predictions of certain theories. So the more seriously we can test these theories and the more seriously we're going to take their predictions, the multiverses. And for the level one and level two multiverses, which are basically our space way farther away than we can see, perhaps very diverse spaces, those are predictions of inflation, and uh, inflation is looking very good. The, the, the case has been strengthened a lot in the last few years by just these, these amazing precision measurements of the baby pictures of our universe. But there was also this um, real heartbreak when it was announced that one had found the smoking gun of inflation, these gravitational waves, these ripples in the fabric of space-time that could have kind of sealed the deal, and they turn, turn out to lift dust. The, the dust, yeah. <laughs> But we're holding our breath now because there are a number of other experiments and as well as this bicep team who are making much more precise measurements. So if this uh, gets discovered in the, in the next few years and turns out to be true this time, then it's going to be really hard, I think, to avoid the level one multiverse, at least. For which, the, is, which is uh, the universe beyond our uh, a visual horizon. That exactly. We Simply because inflation, which produced all of the space we can see, tends to totally overdo it and produce way more yeah, as well. Why, why would the coincidence be that what we see due to this time of the speed of light is exactly the end of the universe? That, that, that would be almost illogical. It, exactly. It would require a crazy fluke. And then for the third level of the multiverse, the quantum multiverse, I think things are also looking very good. We saw an, a beautiful talk here at the conference about how We've been testing the crazy weirdness of quantum mechanics on ever larger scales. Mm -hmm. And there is still absolutely no shred of evidence of quantum mechanics breaking down. If we can keep extending this and ultimately show that quantum mechanics can even be applied to us, <laughs> and we can have you in two places at the same time, that kind of clinches it. Then there's just no way of avoiding that, that, that multiverse. And, and well, even, why, is that, why is that the case? Why, a, as you get larger objects that can be quantum mechanical objects mm -hmm. now, um, as opposed to single atoms, now you have conglomerates, fairly almost macroscopic yeah. objects. Uh, why is it the case that if that were true, you must have a many world interpretation? Well, because the, the counter theories that say that this many worlds is a bunch of rubbish will normally say that when you observe something, then randomness happens and reality picks out just one outcome. So if you can convince yourself that you were recently in two places at once observing two different things. You have to then, have at least two worlds and then Yeah, and it's, it's just slippery slope from there. But And then, then there's quantum computers, which may very well accomplish macroscopic superposition long before yeah. you can do it with living things. And there's, of course, millions and millions of dollars invested in this now because there you're actually exploiting the weirdness, not just to wow your physics buddies, but to actually solve useful problems that would take longer than the and age of our universe. Do those require multiple worlds? The way I think about it, the whole reason they work is because they're the ultimate parallel computers that tap into the parallel computing powers of all these other worlds. So if they can get the answer that would take longer than the age of our universe, to do in our universe in one second, it becomes kind of hard to deny that some of that other reality is okay, really I'm looking there. for these, these uh, logical, by force necessities. We have some observations of the prediction. We have a high certainty that this will happen. So that's for level three. Go back to level two. It, to the degree that inflation becomes more and more sure based on observation for our universe, what's the confidence level that once inflation works in our universe, it has to branch off for level two universes mm. that are universes that are outside our communication of space-time. They've squeezed off in our other bubble or pocket universes, depends on your, your nomenclature. Yeah, that's a great question. What inflation generically does is it never stops. It just keeps making these vast regions of space that the inhabitants of 
we'll call universes, but it does not guarantee any kind of diversity. They, it might just be minting vast numbers of kind of identical ones where the laws of physics seem the same, even if different things happen. Uh, to get to level two and have more diversity and, you know, maybe different amounts of dark energy or different numbers of quarks, whatever, you need, in addition to inflation, to have the fundamental theory of physics, be it string theory, loop quantum gravity, or whatever else, to have more than one solution. Because inflation is this very creative force which transforms potentiality into reality. It's it'll not just make lots of space, but it will create parts of space with each of these solutions. And this is, so this is very much at the f forefront of, of quantum gravity research now, but so far, all the quantum gravity theories we've, that we have on, on the table pretty much have multiple solutions. So if, un unless we come up with something very, very different, inflation would actually create this wonderfully diverse multiverse. So let me try to summarize your grand vision of reality. You have the multiverse within our normal space-time, but then you have another kind of level three, which is the quantum multiverse, which you have the quantum branching. So you have, in a sense, if I get this right, this vast number of, of universes within our current space-time, all of which branching within, within, nested within the quantum multiverse. And all of that with which is just one of the mathematical models of your level four. Did I get that right? Exactly. So I think of it as Russian dolls, one inside the other, inside the other, except that inside the biggest Russian doll, the mathematical level four multiverse, there's many, many, many Russian dolls. <laughs> right. you know, one of them is this quantum level three multiverse. Inside of there, you have lots and lots of dolls that are different level two multiverses <laughs> with different apparent laws of nature. And inside of each one of those, you have a vast number of level one parallel universes where the laws of physics are all the same, but we learn different things in history class. What a way for reality to be. Well, isn't it wonderful? have a really grand reality. <laughs>